Singapore's fight against COVID-19 received a boost when it was announced that the first batch of vaccines would arrive this month. There will be enough for everyone in the country by the third quarter of next year. For a closer look, my colleague Glenda Chong spoke to Lawrence Wong, co-chair of the Multi-Ministry Task Force on COVID-19 and Minister for Education. It really depends on the supply schedule. As we have highlighted, we are prioritizing in the initial phase um, the healthcare workers, frontliners, the elderly and the vulnerable groups. So we will start with that when the first batch of vaccines comes later this month. We might continue with this group, say, till the first early next year. And thereafter, depending on the supply situation, we could progressively offer it to the rest of the population. This may start, say, in the second quarter of next year, and then it will continue on to the third quarter or even the end of next year. So that's roughly what the timeline looks like. But you know, as I said, it de really depends on the supply schedule. And so there's still a bit of uncertainty at this stage. Well, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine is the only vaccine Singapore has approved so far. How will it be administered to ensure that the least amount of possible goes to waste? Yeah, well, that's, that's indeed one of the key considerations. It's, uh, we all know that the vaccine requires cold storage. But it's more than that, because when the vaccine is brought into the clinic, it needs to be refrigerated in the clinic. It can last for a few days in the, um, refrigerate, in the fridge in the clinic. But once you take it out of the fridge and you open the valves, the vaccines will have to be used in a matter of hours. So all this adds to the complexity of the operations. And that's why we are working through carefully how best to schedule the vaccinations for the whole population. And as and when we are ready with that information, we will make it known to everyone. But I just want to assure all Singaporeans that everyone will have the chance to be vaccinated next year. Well, speaking of that, the vaccination will be voluntary, um, but, you know, circumstances can vary. So how will you then incentivize these people to get vaccinated? Well, we will encourage, we strongly encourage everyone who is medically eligible um, to be vaccinated. And we have assured everyone, they've gone through a thorough process, both in Singapore and by regulators overseas, that the vaccine that is being authorized for use is safe and effective. So everyone who is medically eligible, we would strongly encourage you uh, to take up the vaccine when it, it, when it is available. And what proportion of the population should be vaccinated for it then to be um, effective in that sense? Uh, it's hard to pinpoint a numerical target now because there are still many questions to be answered. For example, uh, we still need to know how long the protection uh, will be when you get vaccinated. We still need to know how effective the vaccine will be in reducing transmission rates. And that's why experts around the world uh, they give a range of figures you know, for uh, this question about where, what sort of uh, levels of vaccination to achieve herd immunity because there's still a fair bit of uncertainty. But suffice to say, the higher the figure, the better it is. So once again, we go back to the basic message, please. For those who are eligible, we strongly encourage you to get vaccinated. You are doing it to protect yourself. But when more people get vaccinated, it will also enable us to progressively open up more activities in Singapore in a safe manner through phase three. So if, in that sense, can we say perhaps if you say more people to be vaccinated, the better for this chances of herd immunity, are the percentage, are we looking at maybe 60 percent or are we looking at something so high as 90 percent? Well, that's why I said people have given a range of figures. Um, you would have heard experts around the world talking about 70 percent as the you know, one threshold. Some people say it's not sufficient. It has to go up to 80, 90 percent. There is no uh, specific uh, figure that anyone can say with great precision at this stage because uh, the, a lot of research and uh, uh, you know, assessments are still being made by the scientific community. Minister, once more than one COVID-19 vaccine is rolled out here, will people be informed which vaccine they are getting? And if that's the case, will they then be able to indicate their preference? 
Well, Glenda, at this stage, there's only one vaccine that's been authorised for use. That's a Pfizer-BioNTech uh, vaccine. So there's really not much of a choice. But down the road, we are, as we have said, looking at a few other vaccine candidates. If uh, they all, you know, they will be uh, assessed to be safe before they are authorised for use. But, and if they all turn out to be about the same range of effectiveness then really there is, it makes very little difference whichever, can it, whichever vaccine you use. Alternatively, it may turn out that the data shows that some vaccines are more effective for certain groups of, population, of the population, in which, case, in which case I'm sure the expert committee will then recommend us to vary our vaccine strategy to take into account this uh, different effectiveness levels. But all this is still too early. I think for now, we have the Pfizer vaccine and we will be using that for our vaccination. Minister, speaking of this um, small portion of people, there will be reactions to the vaccine and, and it may differ. Yeah, for example, allergies. How will post-vaccination surveillance be done then? So, so this is an important part of the process. Regulators around the world that have authorised the use of the vaccine, Pfizer in this case, or in others later on, have all required the vaccine companies to monitor the usage of the vaccine, monitor effectiveness over the longer term, as well as any reaction to the vaccine. HSA in Singapore is doing the same thing, and HSA will also actively monitor any reactions together with the local healthcare professionals who are administering the vaccine. Uh, so we will be doing this very thoroughly in order to ensure that the vaccines are safe. Glenda Chong speaking there with Lawrence Wong, co-chair of the Multi-Ministry Task Force on COVID-19 and Minister for Education on News Tonight.